here we are, um, exciting um, again to be having another visitor who has kindly given up her time to join um, ourselves ahead of our Careers Channel launch for National Careers Week um, next week. So we've done um, a series of uh, videos with professionals. Um, so I'll be very shortly introducing our um, guests that I'm delighted who's joined us this morning. Um, so I am uh, Mrs Poppleton. I am the Director of Careers at Chase Terrace Academy. Um, and so without further ado, um, Hannah Montgomery, uh, thank you so much for joining us um, today and giving us your time and sharing your insights, not only with the students that are here now, but you know, in terms of sharing this out on the Careers Channel, it will benefit um, all of our uh, young people, our staff, and also all of our parents um, that can um, sort of log in and access um, sort of this video. So I'm going to start off with um, Sophie, if you'd like to um, sort of introduce um, yourself and ask your first question. Um, so my name's Sophie Young and I'm currently a student at Chase Terrace and I'm in year 13 at the moment. Um, I just wanted to ask you, what personal or professional barriers have you faced um, during your career and how did you overcome them? I think it's a mindset thing, Sophie, because sometimes I used to think that barriers were much bigger than they were. And I think it's even my own mind management of it, of breaking it down. So even going to university, you think, how am I going to do this? How am I going to do it all? And then if you break down things into small, bite-sized chunks and you don't think about the extreme huge thing you've got to do you just go if I can do this little thing today I am winning and congratulate yourself on every little thing so I used to get really overwhelmed by barriers and the best advice that I ever read was to literally just take a little bite-sized piece and have a little compound effect and then it becomes much easier so I know that's a general one but it works for everything that's brilliant thank you um and who or what has influenced you in your life Hannah and and why the biggest influence. So before when I was at university, I didn't really know what I wanted to do. And my mum um, encouraged me. I said bully on a TV interview thing the other day. She went, I wasn't bullying. I wasn't bullying. Encouraged me to do this thing called the Shell Step Scheme. You know, Shell, the oil company. Yeah. They do this thing between the second and third years of university. So you can get work experience if you haven't got a sandwich placement. And pushing myself out of my comfort zone and doing that that was the first thing that kind of pushed me completely out of my comfort zone because I didn't think I'd be good enough and I, and I won it I was Staffordshire's most enterprising student so just don't oh, wow. don't be scared just let your mum encourage you or your dad encourage you or teachers encourage you or anybody just go for it absolutely fantastic thank you um, and Molly would you like to introduce yourself and just ask your first question yeah, OK. Uh, hi, I'm Molly Noble. I'm in year nine at the minute from Chase Terrace. And my first question was, what subjects did you learn in school and do you think they were useful later on? Subjects, gosh, I'm a, I'm a lot older now. Um, subjects at school, what did I do? I know A-levels, I did art, I did design and technology and I did English language. And I wish I had tried harder. I definitely wish I had tried harder at English language and literature because that is my weak point now. That if I'd have spent the time, I am rubbish at spelling and I have to write copy for loads of things and people really judge me on it. So I now have to employ proofreaders and copy readers to, to check what I am doing. So they, they have helped me, um, but I wish I'd have tried harder. How do, how do you think they've helped you, Hannah, from some of the subjects in what you're doing now? The design tech really helped because it allowed me to, we had to practically make something. I remember having to make a bird table. My bird table <laughs> didn't stand the test of time. I am not great with power tools. But what was good with it is that it showed me the physical way of making something and then how to improve it. So that was really worthwhile because it was not just out of a textbook. Oh, definitely. Thank you. Um, so, Evie, would you like to introduce yourself and ask your first question? Um, yeah. Hi, I'm Evie. I'm in year nine at the minute. Um, do you wish there were some things that you were taught that you weren't? Yes. 
<laughs> if I'm completely honest, yes, I wish I'd have had the ability. And that's one of the reasons why I said yes to you now. I wish I had the ability to talk to somebody that had actually gone out and done things for themselves. I was of the very like blinkered mindset. You must get a job and you must earn this amount of money and that's going to make you happy and you must do this. And it wasn't until I kind of stopped wanting to do what I was doing and working for someone that wasn't actually a very nice man. Uh, <laughs> morally, he wasn't very nice. But then I came and started working for myself and I wish that I had been taught more holistically at university and college and been able to show how it would how the skills that I was learning would work in a practical way. What what how would you have said um so again you would it, it feels like you would have had as you said more access to employers or professionals or people that were sort of in those careers and really kind of um give you a wider expectation. Um that that never happened for you then when you were at school or college or or uni. What you know, what was your experience of sort of careers advice or careers education? I remember going into a room and sitting with a very nice lady um, to say, but it wasn't really a, a, a process. It was kind of, oh, well, you could do this, I suppose. It just didn't really seem genuine <laughs> or even related to what I was saying that I wanted to do. I would have loved. Have you ever heard of like Belbin tests and there's different tests mm -hmm. and people yeah. ask you things and they figure it out. I wish I'd have been able to have done that when I was younger to try and understand myself more because you don't actually know what you want to do do you so if there's some analytics test that will help guide you I think that would have been really beneficial yeah definitely I agree and that's actually something that we do do in school oh. um, with our students <laughs> it's not the Belbin one but there are other um, sort of psychometric tests or um, different resources or again um, Evie and Molly haven't had an interview with me yet because I start to see students from year nine. But Sophie, we've had many meetings, haven't we? So we do a lot of self exploration, a lot of, um, of self self assessment, because I think you're right. It's having that awareness of yourself and those skills and those qualities and where are they transferable? Um, so I agree. Really, really important. Something that should be um, taught. So. When did you actually realise that you wanted to do the career that you are doing then now? I know it was complete, but it was when I did that Shell Step scheme. So I became Staffordshire's most enterprising student and I got a, like a massive novelty check and did a presentation down at Millennium Point. And I thought it was like a light bulb moment of what just came naturally to me was putting all these processes in place for this company and all these marketing strategies. And I just thought they were common sense. I was like, well, why aren't you doing that? And we should be doing that. And that just makes sense. And the, the penny finally dropped when I was like, oh, my goodness, I must actually be OK if I'm getting a massive check and people are saying this. And, you know, when you feel quite embarrassed because you're going, I don't really I just did what I thought. I didn't really. So, yeah, that kind of made the penny drop that this is obviously something I'm naturally good at and that I enjoy doing. So that. And, you know, clearly you've gone on to have more successes, um, sort of, haven't you? So most recently, and I know that you've been previously shortlisted for um, sort of awards, but of course, more recently, you just won um, sort of future faces of the, the year. Um, so I know that I've obviously sent you personal congratulations for that. But again, you know, sort of huge congratulations. And obviously, yeah, your TV um, sort of interview that you did as well last week. So how has, how has all that felt, you know, sort of winning the award, doing the um, interview on TV? A little bit overwhelming, to be honest, because as I say, I'm just doing what I do. So like people are going, ah, and I wouldn't be able to get really good results if it wasn't for the clients trusting me to do it in the first place so it's kind of a team effort and I've got to do some really cool things I helped um, a client launch at Reading Festival a couple of years ago and we were allowed to go to festivals and they went on Dragon's Den and that's really cool stuff to be involved in and that's my job how brilliant is that <laughs> so yeah just a bit overwhelming it just is what it is I suppose so, so what can you tell um, students about marketing and about that as the sector and about your job role? You know, what kind of things are you involved in um, actually doing and, and what skills do you think are important for that type of um, sort of career? Being honest, these, the amount of times there's acronyms in marketing and people just sit there and go, 
I don't know all the answers. So say, I don't know all the answers. Marketing is trying to find a clever solution to a problem to help people. So nothing is wrong. So don't be a yes person, really quiz. That would be the most important skill. I think in marketing, the worst thing anyone can ever say is, when I go into clients and I'm trying to say, well, what are you trying to do differently? What do you want to do? And they go, oh, well, we've always done it this way. We must do it this way. I'm like, that's why you're getting the same results because you've always done it this way. So yeah, challenge things and look at them differently. And it clearly also sounds like creative thinking yeah. is one of those very important um, sort of skills um, for, for you and in that type of um, sort of career as well as, okay, thank you. Um, Sophie, do you want to ask your next question? Yeah, so I was just going to ask, have you seen any impact of COVID and what's happening at the moment on your career and how have you overcome this? Yeah, OK. So some of my clients have had impact and we've had to kind of take it back to basics and ask customer satisfaction surveys and find out how we can help their customer and what's changed with their customer and how we can reposition the product. A couple of my clients have expanded because they do technology that support business processes. So that's needed more than ever. So that's really good. Um, but I've also looked at the best return on investment that my strategies have given is for direct mail. And the best one is 1,007, no, 7,185%, get the numbers the right way around in my head. And I was thinking, how can I give smaller companies that now don't have a budget the ability to have great direct mail campaigns without paying the thousands of pounds that it would cost to commission me to do it on my own um so i've launched a different business a new business called gold dust direct a couple of weeks ago which is almost like moon pig for business so you can go on choose which campaign would work for you put your own company logo on and change a bit of text click send and it goes out as an a5 double-sided postcard and that is much more cost effective way of doing it and i know it will get people results because of all the yummy case studies i've got so many people using direct mail well and to get results from it brilliant thank you evie would you like to go your next question um, so I'd like to know, what's been your proudest moment? I think Julie's already picked up on it, literally winning the award um, at the end of January. That was a really proud thing for me um, to do. Just re-establishes and, and helps confirm in your head that you were doing the right thing. It was kind of almost like going back to when Shell Step, when I won that and the penny dropped and I went, oh my goodness, I'm good at this. I think I really needed the reassurance that what I'm doing is, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm doing morally the right things. I'm approaching my business ethically and in the right ways and getting the right results. And that honestly, massively proud, proud thing for me. <laughs> Absolutely. And Molly, would you like to go for your next question, please? Um, yeah. Um, what do you want to achieve next after achieving all of this? I want to grow Gold Dust Direct. So literally, it's only uh, got massive plans for it. It only started to like launched officially two weeks ago. And I want to employ uh, people in the surrounding areas. So Litchfield, Cannock Chase, Burntwood, Tamworth, St Goldfield to be working to support Gold Dust Direct go further. I've already got um, an alliance with the Woodlands Trust and re-engage and to kind of make it, and it's carbon neutral as well, but just, just to kind of make it socially aware and it's a, a good company but a local company i would just want to want it to grow and support the local economy really thank you hannah so i i have got two questions left uh, myself why i mean you kind of touched on this a little bit really um earlier on hannah so why did you agree to give your time why did you agree to be interviewed today um you know do you think this is something um, that's important then for other young people to hear about. Yeah, absolutely. To know that it is achievable, that you can go. So as I mentioned, I helped a client launch with Reading Festival and Festival Republic. That's a huge company and a marketing consultant. There's just a marketing consultant from Litchfield can enable somebody to do that. You can do these things. And if the local, if I'd have known as a student, that these things can happen and had somebody just to ask the questions to, I would have found that completely invaluable. So I don't mind giving up my time for the local community and the local students to try and help because I would have wanted it surely on the foot. Thank you. And final question. So uh, this is one that I ask all of our um, guests that join us. 
What advice would you give to your 13 year old self if you could go back in time? Try, try everything. Don't be caught up in your own head that you won't be good enough and that it will be the end of the world if you fail at something. Because even if you fail at something, you will have learned something along that journey. I was so scared of failure and put myself out there until my mum encouraged, didn't bully me to do that thing. And I wish I'd have put myself out there more and, and tried for loads of different things. So just don't be scared of failure because it's not actually the end of the world at all. It's all in your own head. I absolutely agree. And, you know, these are conversations that clearly have with students um, sort of all of the time. And yet again, we've got another year group, Sophie included, where, of course, their exams have been cancelled for um, sort of this year. So, you know, we're supporting our year 11 and our year 13 students for another year of, of, sort of cancelled exams. And I know they've found that really hard, um, you know, because some have wanted the opportunity to take the exams and to be able to, you know, sort of prove um, prove yourself. So the, there's a lot of discussions and I think as well around COVID, the impact of um, sort of mental health um, on people of all ages, you know, going down to, you know, sort of primary school children that were um, seeing it is that world word failure and, and and I couldn't agree with your advice more Hannah I think we have to realize that it's absolutely fine to sometimes fail things and that actually you can learn from doing that and how to improve and you know just sort of reflect and how you can do that differently um sort of next time so no I think that's really really um good advice to finish on um so thank you guys so much for your time today thank you students for joining us and we will definitely um, be meeting and catching up on another occasion. Yeah, Take care, everybody. Yeah. Thanks, everyone. Thanks. Bye. Bye.